What's up guys, Frank Fulci back again with another weekly haul unboxing and collection update video before we jump into this not weekly haul. Uh, make sure you guys click on the subscribe button and also click on the icon, the bell icon even, for notifications of all future uploads. Welcome back to the channel guys, just another impromptu video. I really never plan these things out anymore. I do have a small pile of stuff here and I always know that I have to eventually get to them but uh, I kind of just do these videos now when I feel like it. Uh, for a while there, I was trying to do more consistently, but uh, I'm preoccupied with a lot of things. Been doing a lot of this 3D printing stuff, which is like a gift and a curse, right? Like, it's really fun and really satisfying. It's a great new hobby of mine, and when things print out successfully, it's a really great feeling, especially when it's something that I've designed from scratch myself, which I've been doing a couple of things here and there around the house. Nothing too crazy that I don't think anyone else will be excited about but me, but... um. Uh, but then it's like a fucking nightmare, this machine, when it doesn't... I've been having a lot of problems with the leveling of the, the build plate, and... I feel like I have to level it way more than I should. I don't think people level their plates every fucking day like I have to. So something is up there, and it's just crazy. I don't know. Super stressful. <laughs> it's, it's fun, and it should be fun as a hobby, but it's, like, stressful because now I've had a few failed prints where... You know, I finally, I made a sale because I posted up uh, some, like, trading card box container that I had made for myself the other day. I posted it on Facebook, and one of my random Facebook friends said he needed a box like that for his personal little card collection or whatever. So we worked out a price, and now it's like I'm printing, trying to print my first item for an actual person other than myself. You know, I've given gifts and things, but in terms of a paying customer, which is kind of the whole goal of this thing anyway, right? Like, maybe a little side hustle or whatever. But now I have my first customer he's already sent me payment and i've been trying to print this freaking thing is three pieces or four pieces that have to be printed and uh they're failing and i have to restart them and i mean these are the main box it's like a 55 hour print i mean this is gonna be two days straight printing so i can't really afford to waste time on this so it's printing again right now second round i had to you know stop the other one after like six seven hours of print so it's very nerve-wracking, but uh, if this is successful, maybe I can make more sales. I don't know. It's <laughs> more stress than I need. But anyway, guys, we're a few minutes in, and I haven't showed anything yet, but just wanted to give you a little update. First, I'm going to show something that's already unpackaged. I got this from Amazon, and I've actually been reading it. It's a... I picked this up. It was on my wish list for a little bit, but it was on sale. It went on sale for uh, like three bucks and change, so I was like, all right, I'm going to pick this up now. Uh, sorry about the lighting, guys. The shadows and darkness are being weird right now. I guess I could turn on the the light, the ceiling light. I think that might be better. Who knows? Looks the same to me on screen here, but whatever. Anyway, this is the slob by Aaron Beauregard. Like I said, it was uh, became. Super cheap, was on sale for like three bucks and change, and I uh, figured now's the time, you know, no better time than now. I haven't really been doing much reading, but since I've had my eye on this one, but uh, I did, I'm like 75% eh, through this one. It's going slow, but uh, that's my fault, it's not the book's fault. The book's actually really good, really well written for one of these splatterpunk extreme horrors, and it sounds like I'm saying that as an insult. I guess it kind of is, a lot of these books aren't written super well, I mean, a lot of my favorite authors are the best of the ones that I've come across, obviously, the Judith Sonnet, the Otis Batemans, and people like that. But Aaron Beauregard is really good. This is, uh, I think, only, like, the second or third book of his that I've read. Uh, again, super short, like most of the ones I've read uh, in this subgenre are. This is 130 pages, so on the... L I want to say a little longer side, but it's not. This is probably average size of these novellas and things that I've been reading, but... I think it was Paul, a.k.a. Scary Bear, that commented a couple of videos ago about, hey, have you heard about Aaron Beauregard? I think I had shown off another package from him that I bought. I think the cuck was one. Well, that was one of the books of his that I read, but I bought some other stuff of his that were so, like super cheap. I think maybe around Black Friday he had a sale or something. But anyway, nice to have in the collection. And again, I've already started reading it, so I figured I'd show that off here. Uh, this one I split open just to get a peek. I didn't see the notes that it came with. This is an Amazon package. And we got some dope stuff here. There's two people I can guess this is from. Uh, I knew it. I knew this man. I was just speaking about him. One of my favorite underrated horror movies. Very unique. And the other note is Enjoy Your Gift. These are both from the good brother Scary Bear, a.k.a. Paul. 
I could always count on Paul for um, helping me to fill in the gaps of my Unearthed Films collection. So he's done this a couple times now. I think he sent me a couple of the new releases of the August Underground Blu-rays. I think I still have one more of those. There's a trilogy. I think I have to get the, the last one that Unearth put out. And the last one in the trilogy, I think, is Penance. Either Mortem or Penance. I forget the order of them. But I still need one more of them. I'm trying to wait for, like, sales and stuff on that. But, uh... I said Paul picked up the other two for me, and now he's picked up No Escape, which is part of the Unearthed Classics line. This is number 10, so I think I have all Unearthed Classics at this point, maybe missing one other. And this is just a regular uh, regular release in their regular line, but uh, 15th anniversary of Dead Girl. I, know, I saw this thing probably 10 years ago. I didn't see it right away, so I don't want to say 15 since it's the 15th anniversary, but probably close to 10 years ago I saw this movie for the first time, and I've seen it a couple times total. I want to revisit this one again, especially to see how, uh, like, the new bonus features, new interviews and stuff. Um, hopefully they did something with the transfer. I mean, when I saw it, I don't think there was even a Blu-ray out. It must have been just DVD quality that I was watching, but interested to see. Uh, I'm, like, in the midst of sneezing and my contacts are bothering me in case you see me doing weird twitchy things in my eyes. But, um... <clears throat> What was I saying? Yes, I want to revisit this one, and I'm happy that Unearth put it out. So, very excited about both of these. So, thank you for sending that gift over, my friend. Very uh, thoughtful of you. Here's another Amazon one that I kind of had sliced open, but I think this is one that Andy had warned me about. Yeah, there was no note on this. This is one that the good brother Andy sent over. This is Lord of Misrule. Now, he knows I collect these magnet releasing titles. Uh, I don't, I'm not 100% on those. You know, I don't have every single one, but... Ever since I, my uh, reviewing days, I was I was getting a lot of Magnet titles then, and I I was a fan of a lot of the movies that Magnet puts out. They put out some good quality stuff. But anyway, he also knows, I believe he knows this about me, but he knows I like uh, William Brent Bell, who's the director of Orphan and Orphan First Kill and The Boy. And I think, did he also, did this man also do... I want to say he did the last exorcism, but I think I'm making that up. So I'll have to look that up. But let me know in the comments below if that's the same guy, William Brent Bell. But looking forward to this. I watched a trailer of it once Andy uh, warned me, told me he was going to be sending me this uh, in the mail. But uh, Rebecca has recently taken over as vic vicar of a rural English village. When her young daughter Grace goes missing, Rebecca must decide how much she's willing to sacrifice to rescue her daughter from the grip of evil. So a little supernatural, cultish type thing, judging by the uh, the imagery and the trailer that I watched. Focus. Release. All right. Uh, a couple of exci exciting, exciting, exciting things here. I'll do the Vinegar Syndrome one first because you guys like Vinegar Syndrome more than Scream Factory, it seems. But I love Scream Factory, so I'll save my Scream Factory package for the end. I don't even know what's in this. Just monthly subscriber stuff. Might have added one extra, but probably not. I'm missing out on a lot of, like, sub-label, sister-label, partner-label, whatever the hell you want to call them, with Vinegar Syndrome. I don't really look... At their stuff, I kind of... not. I don't think I regret being a subscriber again. But I'm not as into it. I mean, maybe because I'm distracted with, like, 3D printing and other stuff right now. Not really into movie watching or collecting as much. But, um... I don't know. I'm not really feeling the subscriberness, If that makes sense. Anyway, I don't know if I'll do it next year. We'll see where I'm at headspace-wise next year around the time when it comes to renewing the subscription for vinegar syndrome but anyway this is the last package they sent whatever month i'm guessing it's february's um package but first we have the playgirls and the vampire of course as always i know nothing about any of these uh so let me know in the comments below uh how you feel about these this is an oldie 1960 interesting definitely runs the gamut of what the Nigger Syndrome is covering. Obviously, you guys know that by now. If Even if you don't buy their releases yourself, just from watching my channel and seeing the various things that I've shown off of theirs. Next, we have Spanish Bloodbath. Night of the Skull, Violent Bloodbath, The Fish with the Eyes of Gold. This one is a little more exciting to me than that last one, I would say. Just a collection of uh, Spanish films we got from 1974. Oh, all three are from 1974. Yeah, this is definitely Gialli. Just by reading the names of the titles, I could tell. But in the early 70s, while Italy led the charge in the production of Gialli, its neighbors to the west, Spain, began churning out more and more of its own takes on the genre. With their uniquely 
Catalan flavor and cast. This trio of criminally underseen Spanish Jolly have all been newly restored in 4K from their 35mm camera negatives and are at least are at last making their worldwide Blu-ray debuts from Vinegar Syndrome. So that's exciting. I'm gonna pause here for a phone call, guys. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, for you, it's a split second, and I'm just splicing it in. But uh, for me, that was like a 15-minute phone call from my mother. So anyway, back at it. Um, last one of these Vinegar Syndrome package here. This is a little bigger. This is in conjunction with Paramount, so a former Paramount title. But Phase 4, filmed by Saul Bass, starring Nigel Davenport and Michael Murphy. Uh, this one got the nice treatment here, so this must be a big deal. Again means nothing to me. I know you real film aficionados. I mean, I don't think any of you guys watch. I've lost all the snobby people. Um, but let me know in the comments below what this movie's about. Of course, it's a 4K, so there's a special treatment as well. But this one is from 1974. So let me know in the comments below what's the big deal about this film. Everybody seems to love this in the um, Vinegar Syndrome Facebook group. Oh well. Anyway, this is the one that I'm most excited about out of all this. Although that Unearthed one is pretty exciting to me. It's just funny because years ago I was not a big Unearthed fan, but they put out a lot of good stuff now. I guess I'm getting more des desensitized to the extreme stuff, although I don't really even consider a lot of that shit extreme anymore. But I guess that's the point that I was just making. But anyway, Scream Factory, they had their annual... Valentine's Day sale, Love It Is In The Scare, or whatever they call it. I feel like the name changes slightly each year. I could be making that up. I know, though, that the theme of it changes in terms of, like, what titles necessarily go on sale. So I think last year, or within the last few years, was, like, 90s, or, like, a bunch of the 90s movies and stuff. But I don't know if this, there was a theme this year. I don't know if it was, like, 2000s or something. I guess we'll find out in a second when I start looking at the years and stuff on these. But picked up a decent amount, but these, again, all on great... Price, sale price there was a bunch more that i wanted but i said these are the cheapest of them they're all ones i don't have already obviously and um every single one of these was actually one of these screen factory does them a lot these like limited pressings of 1500 or so and i used to like fomo the shit out of them back in the day like when i was actively collecting tons and tons uh because i was so scared that fomo of course i was gonna miss out on them but there's a bunch on the site that i didn't even know existed I think all these were. Maybe one of them wasn't or something. But most of these are that uh, limited to whatever. But they were still all available. So I think that only, I want to say, backfired on Green Factory. I don't think it did. I think it did exactly what it, what it said it was going to do. I think they put out a Kurt Russell movie or something recently that was super limited. And everyone was crying about that shit. I didn't get it. So I should be crying about it too. But I guess you don't know what you're missing when you don't know about it. Whatever. So anyway, <clears throat> first up. Sphinx, again, I always get super excited when I add stuff to my Scream, collect Scream, collect blah, 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 Scream Factory collection. Um, it's probably the biggest collection I have. I mean, obviously, Vinegar Syndrome is a close runner-up, but I think Arrow and Scream Factory are the ones that I have the most of. I could be lying about the Arrow one, but Scream Factory for sure is the most. But anyway, Sphinx is the first one. This is from 81, so clearly I lied about the theme of this. <laughs> Maybe it was 80s, because this one's in from the 80s. Also, 89. Lords of the Deep is next. Um, looks like a sci-fi one. Again, I don't really know much about these. <clears throat> but I get more excited about Scream Factory titles that I don't know about than Vinegar Syndrome ones, because Vinegar Syndrome titles tend to run the gamut. They're not just straight horror or sci-fi thriller horror, right? They have all sorts of weird artsy movies and things, and now those are more delegated to the sister labels and partner label stuff I know these days, but still, not everything they put out is, like, really up my alley, so even though I'm a subscriber, sometimes they're just weird, too weird, too obscure for me, but at least with Scream Factory, you know, while they put out some stuff that's not straight up horror all the time, um... It's always more in my wheelhouse, if I'm making any sense today. But anyway, next up, School Spirit. This is from 85. <clears throat> and see, now this is a wild 80s comedy about a wildly sex-crazed specter. So horror comedy, but still horror-ish enough for me, I guess. <laughs> next up, 
Uh, we have Crime Zone and Future Kick, a double feature. This looks silly as shit, honestly. Um, <laughs> this looks like... I know it's not him, because this is from 88 and 91. Uh, this looks like Dean Kane to me, right? The guy who used to play Superman in Lois and Clark. <laughs> That's definitely not him, but... Uh, join action superstar Don the Dragon Wilson in the far-flung future of 2025. Not that far-flung anymore. Where a man is a victim of his own technology and corporations deal to, to a black market that trades in human body parts. That's future kick. But Crime Zone is the legendary David Carradine stars in the sci-fi action as Jason, a mysterious stranger who recruits a pair of young lovers to commit a crime spree in a futuristic police state, promising them the only thing that matters, escape. Definitely got to throw some of these on at some point, just even if they're on in the background. But when I do that, I can never actually commit to the background movie. I end up just having to watch it because I'm like, why would I put this on if I'm not going to pay attention to it? So... I'm not good at uh, having just things running all day in the background like that. But anyway, the last one is su The Seduction. This one is from 82. Uh, this is a little screwed up here. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to read the full synopsis on this. But So even though I said uh, Scream Factory has more straight-up horror stuff than Vinegar Syndrome, none of these seem like straight-up horror. But that just makes a liar out of me. Not the first time, not the last. Anyway, still excited about this. But that's it for today's haul. Pretty good haul overall, I'd say. Scream Factory... Vinegar Syndrome, Unearth Films, a nice splatterpunk book, and then the other Magnet release. So a decent amount of stuff here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you uh, thought was the best from this haul, what I should be excited about that maybe I don't sound too excited about already, or maybe something that I uh, am too excited about and is actually trash. You let me know, because you guys are always well-informed way more than I am. And uh, that'll do it, guys. Again, I'll get back to my uh, 3D printing stresses. And everything else has been all right so far, I guess, in my life. Uh, overall, stressing about weight loss and dieting and things like that. My back is healing still, slowly but surely. Still doing some PT-like exercises. I actually started doing some more weight stuff this past week, so I worked out three times. Feeling pretty good about that. Definitely, again, I put on some few, a few pounds. So every time I take these four, five, six weeks off from working out at all pounds just start uh, coming back so anyway that's all in terms of my life update guys hopefully you guys are doing better than me or you know you're doing well overall happy healthy safe all that good stuff guys until next time whenever that may be peace out and be good mm -hmm.